Kia ora and welcome to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and today we're going to talk about the six house gangs in Necromunda and give you a really basic overview if you're looking to get into Necromunda or you've just started. Give you a really basic overview of what the six gangs are about, is the house gangs, um, what they play like and um, just give you a general feel about where to start and how to get on with Necromunda and which house is right for you. Now um, I've been playing Necromunda since the 90s, um, I'm pretty old now, uh, and the game has changed a lot um, in the two editions. Of course, some of you old school purists um, still believe that the first game is, the first edition of the game is the one. To me, I think the current edition with all the extras that we've got now and the continued support from Games Workshop is by far the greatest game, uh, miniature game that I've ever played in my life, um, and I'm absolutely loving it. Um, we've been playing the new edition now for three or four years, running campaigns out of Wellington here in New Zealand. Um, anyway, we'll get into it. Um, first off, we're going to start, I think we'll do it by releases. So um, we will start with the first book that was released, which was House of Chains, House Goliath. So, for those of you who don't know, Goliath are huge muscle-bound brutes, basically. Um, the aesthetic is very much sort of Mad Max punk, sort of post-apocalyptic punk dudes from um, from Mad Max, you know, that kind of vibe. They've all got Mohicans, they've all got big muscles, they've all got spikes. Um, now House Goliath, if I give you a really, really basic rundown of what they're like, they're basically big and tough. Um, they excel at sort of close combat and short range to mid range um, shooting. Um, the drawbacks and positives I'll just quickly go into as well. Um, the positives for House Goliath I'd say that is that they're probably one of the strongest of the six gangs, if not the strongest currently. Um, they have excellent uh, mental stats in that they've got a really, really high call, um, which is excellent for bottle checks, things like that. Um, they don't have great willpower, um, but we'll get into that in more detail and why willpower is quite a good stat now. It never used to be thought about as much at the beginning of the game. Um, they get access to excellent weapons at creation. Their house list is very, very good. Um, they get one of the best super champions in the game. And yeah, basically they're, they're a real powerhouse of a gang. Now, I've played every single house gang so far whether I've been using the current up-to-date um, House of books or not. And I can tell you that House Goliath are really hard to play against a lot of the time. Um, I would say they're quite forgiving for beginners because you have um, such a strong, forgiving campaign gang. Um, they don't die too easily. The high toughness throughout means that they're very hard to kill, very hard to break. Um, and generally speaking, they're quite a forgiving gang to play. Um, and you've also got some really good options in terms of loadouts and things like that. Um, overall, I would say that the one thing that frustrates me about playing Goliath is the low movement. Movement for across the board is not good. It is quite dull and quite boring. And when you play on 3D dense terrain like I do, it can mean that closing distances is very difficult. And if you're playing against someone who's able to outposition you and outmaneuver you and just pin you all the time, it can be really, really frustrating. So um, bear that in mind as well if you want to play Goliath. Um, the positions, I suppose, I'm used to Blood Bowl, so saying positions is kind of uh, normal to me, but the different characters that you would get in a, in a Goliath list, um, the leader uh, is excellent. Um, the Tyrant, I believe they're called, is excellent. One of the best leaders out of the six gangs, also one of the most expensive. Um, they have really high attacks. Um, they're absolutely brutal in close combat. Um, you get access to some of the best skills um, in the game as well, with Ferocity being the main one. And um, generally they're an absolute beast. You can give them long range weapons if you like, heavy weapons like heavy bolters, you can give them bolt guns, grenade launchers, all sorts of stuff, or you can just go cl close combat powerhouse and just smash people to pieces. Um, you then got your, your average champions who, again, um, with renderizers and things like that, they can be really formidable. Um, but usually I'd say that the general um, champion is probably better given a special weapon or a heavy weapon, something like that to start on with. 
Um, you've then get, got their uh, stimmers, which are disgusting, um, absolutely disgusting, um, super, super charged um, Goliath champions, basically, who can either have sort of paired um, axes or um, grenade, sort of auto grenade launchers, which are crazy as well. Um, these guys are ridiculous, very expensive again, but are just going to tear into anything that they that they go up against generally. Um, you've then got your your general gangers who are um, really tough. Like I said, low movement, high toughness. Toughness is a really big thing in this game because um, of the flesh wound mechanic. Um, toughness four means that you're gonna survive and stick around a little bit more should you be taking flesh wounds quite often. Um, it also means that you're just harder wound, harder to wound in the first place as well. Having said that, of course, the gang is very expensive on creation, so you can only ever really squeeze. Um, seven or eight fighters in and they're gonna have quite minimal equipment to start with as well so if you want to go with the more elite lists you're looking at like six guys which can be um, fairly hard to run within a campaign should you lose one in game one which we all know happens um, leaders die to stub gun shots by Jews it happens quite often and um, the other thing of course is gene smithing now you've got the um, the, the books um, gene smithing is a thing it basically means that you've got customization in the stats that you can give your fighters so you can give them extra toughness extra wounds things like this at a cost um, it's quite straightforward but it does give you a lot of options in terms of um, being able to run them the way you want to run them um, and changing their stats as well um, but yeah overall goliath <clears throat> incredibly powerful definitely a top tier gang um, but I would say personally and this this is all my opinion basically personally I find them quite dull and quite boring to play um, and I probably won't be playing them again anytime soon because I like to test myself and try out new and interesting lists and I find that Goliath I can't really do that with um, so moving on we have House Escher which are the the ladies of Necromunda um, they are an all-female all gang of poisoned, um, toxin-wielding chicks, basically. Um, very sort of tank girl-esque. Um, they've all got crazy boots and um, big wild hair and colourful um, animal skins and whatnot. Um, Escher are the kind of glass cannons of the game, I suppose. They, um, they hit hard and fast. They're more of a hit-and-run type of gang. Um, they have access to very, very cheap um, las guns, which is excellent, but if you're going to spam them, then you might be that guy. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but generally speaking, Escher are quite versatile, um, and they're a sort of mid-tier gang, to be honest, in, the, in this grand scheme of things. I wouldn't say they're particularly powerful in the meta, if you were really going to break it down like that. But Escher play like, um, yeah, like I said, sort of hit and run gang. Um, they can be quite weak, but they can hit really hard with toxin and gas weapons, which, um, which can damage anybody very easily. Um, you can have um, stiletto knife wielding Jews killing leaders straight up. It just, it happens. Um, and that's what's cool about Escher. You've got access to agility skills um, across the board pretty much. And you've also got their... Um, acrobatic stuff as well which again we'll talk in more detail but just to give you an overview on these six gangs um, Escher are nice they've got really high movement generally you've got wild runners which get which have movement six um, you can add those to the mix that's the um, prospect um, in the gang um, I didn't talk about the Goliath prospect basically because they're trash um, so <laughs> that's my opinion I didn't bring them up at all um, those are the forge born I believe but moving on to Escher um, yeah, so you get toxins, you get chem alchemy, which is their sort of unique thing, which means that you get to basically put in all sorts of different combat drugs to your weapons and basically um, enhance your weapon's effectiveness and also use chems on yourself as well, on your gangers to make them more effective or whatever. Um, but there's loads of customization in that. It can be quite expensive to do, though. Um, but generally speaking, Escher are nice, a nice gang to start with. Not too forgiving. Um, the one thing that I'd say stands out really at the moment is um, their super champion, which is the Death Maiden. Now, Death Maidens are pretty ridiculous, to be honest. They um, mince anything they get into combat with. So, <clears throat> with the super champions, I say super champions because this is the special champion that you get in each gang now. 
except for Cordor, which doesn't get one. Um, but the super champions are all so good that in our campaign we've limited it to one per gang maximum, um, which I think is a really good idea to be honest. Um, and that should be that should just be a thing. Um, but the super champions, I would say, are so powerful that it really usually comes down to who charges first wins. Um, so a Nacticall against a Death Maiden, it's just who charges first gets the kill. Um, Death Maidens are very, very powerful. They get access to skills like Spring Up, so they're very hard to pin down. They're going to charge you, they're going to rip you to shreds. Um, they've got Toxin weapons, they've got um, Toxin claws and things like that, which can really, really just put in the hurt on everybody. They also get um, Toughness 4 as well, which for Esha is, is a nice bit of staying power that they need. Um, and yeah, you can really, really hurt people with Death Maidens. Um, I would say they're kind of the highlight at the moment with Esher. Um, but yeah, overall Esher are quite a nice game to play. Um, cheap las guns is always excellent. Las guns are arguably the best weapon in the game overall. Best basic weapon in the game, I would say. You might not agree with me on that one, but the accuracy and everything is just such a big factor, and the pinning mechanic in Necromunda can be can be huge. Um, so if you really wanted to, to mix it up with Esher and have some nice range but also some close combat threat with your Death Maidens then you've got it covered. Moving on again, uh, we have then got House of Artifice. Um, I'm skipping all locks for the minute, we're going straight to House Van Saar, which um, used to be my favourite game in the old version of the game, uh, the favourite gang in the old version of the game, but not so much anymore. Um, Van Saar, before the gang books came out, the House of books came out, I would say uh, were just the best gang in the game. They had crazy ballistic skill all the way through. They were the shooty gang, kind of like Tau in 40k. Um, and they still are. However, the sort of power creep that's come up with the other books um, hasn't really applied to House of Artifice. And they've got some sort of some interesting stuff that you can do with Cybernetica, Cybernetica but they aren't quite as powerful as they used to be next to the other gangs. And actually, I would say they were more mid tier now. Um, and you might disagree with me on that, but I have played a lot of Necromunda, and I can tell you that. Um, it, it's a game of dice at the end of the day, but if you're really going to go number crunching and meta stuff, then of course Vansar are pretty good on paper, but the downsides to, to Vansar um, is that they're slow, again, um, they're pretty useless in close combat, um, they don't get access to crazy powerful stuff necessarily. You can do some really interesting things with Cybernetica, but it's really overpriced for what it is, and it's more just fluff, fluffy and fun to be honest. Um, but Vansar, they're the shooty gang, um, so they're good at range, um, they get access to plat lots of energy weapons, only energy weapons in fact, they don't get access to any um, hard rounds whatsoever, so they're basically the polar opposite of House Orlok in this regard. Now um, Vansar are <coughs> really nice looking miniatures, probably the nicest mini looking miniatures, but very futuristic, very techy. Um, and yeah, basically they get lots of LAS weapons, lots of plasma weapons, um, plasma guns, you know are ridiculously powerful in this game just being damaged to and rapid fire is just disgusting quite frankly however they're scarce as well so they do run out of ammo quite often um, you also get access to the shooting um, skills which are definitely one of the best tables in the game um, of skills so Vansar play like a sort of gun line, I suppose, but quite an elite one. You can't get that many bodies in a Vansar starting list. They get good armor, they get good weapons, they're very slow, so you can out-maneuver out them and out-position them, out them very easily, but um, they will fold if you get in their faces very, very quickly. So um, bear that in mind. They're quite nice to start with, I'd say, if you're starting out in Necromunda. Vansar can be quite nice, but in a campaign, if you lose one of your guys, they're usually twice the cost of another gang's guy. So um, you're going to really suffer if you lose a character. Even just a ganger is hard to lose, whereas if you're playing something like um, Outcasts, you're going to not care about your gangers at all and play with Reckless Abandon, it's much more fun. So that's basically my two cents on House Vansar. Um, you've also, oh, just going back on that, you've also got the surfboards, um, the Neotechs, which have these crazy surfboards that if you've seen um, Highlander 2, which was a dreadful film, basically those guys um, from that film. Um, but yeah, guys on surfboards with shields and pistols and stuff. Um, not that powerful, probably too expensive to start with. Um, I don't personally rate them at all. 
but you can do some interesting things and they kind of offset the low movement of the gang, the low maneuverability of the gang a little bit as well, which adds a little bit of extra to them. Moving on to House Orlock, House of Iron. Um, House Orlock are the kind of Ryu of Street Fighter. They even look like Ryu of Street Fighter because they all wear headbands, but House Orlock are basically uh, a gang of bikies. Um, they are the opposite to Van Sar in that they don't use energy weapons really. They use a lot of hard rounds, shotguns, bolt guns, auto guns generally. Um, they've got more interesting with the House of books, but I would say personally, you might love them. Personally, I find them the least interesting fluff wise. They are very much real worldy, I think. Um, they're, they're like Sons of Anarchy basically. Um, and yeah, um, they can be really, really good mid to short range firepower guys. Very, very tough. They get access to ferocity skills, which I mentioned, probably my favorite skill tree. Um, skills like Nerves of Steel, True Grit um, are really, really good. Um, and yeah, the leader starts with three wounds as well, so he's really hard to remove. Um, the new thing that they've got is they each get a legendary name, your champion, your champions and your leader get legendary names which is kind of like giving them an extra skill however these legendary names aren't quite as good as skills generally um, some of them are great but uh, most of them are not um, but yeah you get access to some really really good weapons on creation um, and generally I would say they're a really nice game for beginners a nice gang for beginners I would say that they are very forgiving tough like Goliath but not so tough you can get more bodies in a list and they get access to doggos, cyber doggos, which who doesn't like having pets? Very expensive, I wish they were cheaper. Um, but they also get um, their super champion, which is also quite powerful, um, is the arms master, which you can equip with a huge servo suit and an arc hammer, which is gonna smush anybody that you get into combat with. However, very expensive to start with, so um, not quite as powerful as the Death Maiden, for example. They also get a prospect, which is really, really cool, called the Wrecker. It's basically a kid with a jump pack, and they hit real hard, actually. Um, so, so they can be give you a bit of extra maneuverability and just a bit of extra flair to your gang, too. <coughs> so, um, yeah, Wreckers are really cool. I highly rate those in starting lists, at least one or two, um, just to give you something different, some extra punch, um, where flails and stub guns can be, can be quite annoying, actually. Um, moving on to... Probably my most fun, funnest gang to play, which is House Cordor. Um, Cordor are the religious fanatics, the deliverance, the um, <laughs> the jewel of the banjos kind of gang. Um, they are pretty hilarious. Basically, it's all about bodies, fanatic, um, zealous bodies, um, and you can play them in a hybrid of Cordor or Redemptionists. Redemptionists are basically the KKK, but Games Workshop doesn't admit that. Um, they used to be look more like it as well, but um, real crazy guys, slightly more elite, um, and they get access to better weaponry and armor, whereas Cordor are like the dregs, of, the absolute dregs, um, and they get very, very um, minimalist equipment, blunderbusses, um, reclaimed auto guns and whatnot as well, so their equipment is not as good, um, but really it's all about bodies, um, and they've also got Faith Dice, which is a similar mechanic if you play 40k to Sisters of Battle, I believe. Um, so you can perform feats of crazy shenanigans during the game. Um, in my experience, it's kind of annoying just rolling loads and loads of dice every single phase. Um, and you're gonna lose track of it quite easily if you're not careful too. But Cordor are super fun. They are the template gang. So they have a lot of templates, a lot of flame weapons, a lot of uh, missile launchers, like heavy crossbows, things like that. Um, they don't get the best access to skills. The champions, for some reason, get brawn skills, which are the worst skill tree in the game, um, which can be really annoying on a guy that you want as a shooter. Um, however, you get bomb rats, which is super fun. You can send bomb rats off to, to explode around corners and stuff, and that's super cool too. Um, and the juves, 20, 20 credit juves with stub guns, um, can just put in work. I've had juves just mopping up games and just kicking everybody as soon as they get seriously injured. I had a movement eight juve uh, at one point who was just kicking everybody constantly. It was great for 20 credits. Um, so yeah, Cordor are mega, mega, mega fun. And I would seriously recommend, um, I wouldn't say that they were a beginner gang particularly because they are a little bit complex with the, man the faith dice mechanic but they are really, really fun to play. Um, definitely the most fun I've had with a house gang, um, but 
house gangs aren't really my jam anymore. So moving on to the very, very last one, we have, um, which one do we have now? Well, of course, we have House to Lack, the House of Shadow. Now, House to Lack are probably my favorite gang overall, I would say. They look awesome. They're guys in trench coats from Dark City, if you've ever seen that. They've all got bald heads and they've all got sniper rifles and silenced pistols and stuff. Now, they are... Um, the sneaky gang basically um, they have lots of access to cunning skills um, and savant skills things like that they have um, really good sniping ability they have access to make things turn pitch black uh, the tactics cards are excellent um, but they've also since the book's been released been made into the sort of the psychic gang so they've now got access to sort of psychic powers that are exclusive to them now I don't think any of the psychic powers that the lack get are as good as general psychic powers in the game for weirds, but um, they can be quite interesting. You can do some real shenanigans with them, like teleporting an actical into somebody um, through a building, for example. Um, we won't get into it too much, but they're really interesting. They're tactically, um, tactically incredibly cool to use. Um, I would say they were probably the least forgiving for beginners because they are quite complex with with everything um, and you really need to have a good strategy brain to be able to play the lack effectively I would say that said they are really really nice to play really fun really fluffy <clears throat> lots of infiltration so you can move your guys into the field um, you know at the beginning of the game and set up in, in awkward ways you can have skills like overwatch on long rifles to just uh, bang anyone who moves and interrupt activations and things like that their super champ, the Nacked Ghoul, is just the best one, really. Um, almost as good as a Death Maiden, but they can infiltrate at any time in the game um, and just turn up and just change the tide of battle entirely in one turn. Um, they are excellent. They get access to these to these twin um, claws, which are unbelievably OP, and you're never going to use them. But they also get these samurai swords, which are really cool too, and that's pretty much all you need on a Nacked Ghoul. Um, really 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 cool looking as well um but yeah overall they're probably the most complex gang to play for beginners i would say so if you're starting out with necromunda i would definitely suggest maybe orlock or esher perhaps goliath um the others are definitely require a bit more tactical um, and strategy planning i would say to play um in terms of campaigns though you kind of want a gang that's going to last well and goliaths really help in that regard as well um but I would say Orlocks would be my pick for a starting gang, just to get the feel of the game, really. Um, but yeah, that's basically my summary of the six house gangs. I'm going to do one of the, the non-house gangs as well, which will be slightly more um, out there, because most people who get into this game just see what's on the surface, and they see the six gangs that you get um, in main, but they don't really see the, the fun ones like uh, Ogrins and uh, Outcasts and things like that. Um, but um, yeah, that's basically my view on the six house gangs. Um, please like, share and subscribe and um, I'm hoping to do a series of these videos. I'm actually going to do a video on pretty much every element of the game at some point and just give my views and opinions on it from someone who has played a lot of campaign play. Um, of course, my views and opinions are my own and you might disagree with me and might go, hey Damon, that's wrong. Um, and yeah, we get rules wrong and stuff, but um, I've got a good understanding of the game so I should be able to give you advice on these things um, and that's it for today so um, thank you for watching and um, long may it continue with your support